డియర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ మనం ఇంతకుముందు క్లాసులో ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ స్టాట్యూట్స్ పార్ట్ వన్ అని ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ స్టాట్యూట్స్ నేచర్ అండ్ స్కోప్ గురించి డిస్కస్ చేశాం అండ్ ఇన్ ద పార్ట్ వన్ వీ అండర్స్టూడ్ దాట్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ స్టాట్యూట్స్ ఇన్ understanding the legislations made by the parliament or other legislative organs now in the part 2 we are looking here and what are the source for interpretation what are the various rules that are developed to guide the judges to interpret a statutes and also in the part 1 we understood that interpretation of statutes principles are developed by the judges on their own by their own experience while dealing with the cases that came before them and in that way one jurist by name jolovics is suggesting that two types of major classification of a rules of interpretation according to jolovis you can find here one part is known as a the rules of legal interpretation the another is called doctrinal interpretation the legal interpretation means that interpretation of the words in the statute according to the definitions given in the statute itself therefore interpretation as per the rules set out in the statute the framers while making a legislation they take utmost care in defining each and every term to avoid confusion therefore in every statute you can find there are definition clauses which explains the terms used used in the statute therefore this is known as a legal interpretation agai the legal interpretation are two types one is known as authentic interpretation the another is called usual interpretation in case of authentic interpretation interpretation is made as per the rules prescribed in the very statute itself that means when you are searching meaning for a word in a statute in that statute itself you can find the meaning of the word here in the very statute itself not outside so in the very statute that mean the statute which now in question and the statute which the court consider for interpretation in that statute itself you can find the rules for understanding for example if you take who is an employee in payment of bonus act if you talk in general employee means any person who is employed for wages to do any work in any industry or factory like that. but it is not every employee entitled for bonus therefore in the bonus act employee means a worker whose salary does not exceed 21000 rupees per month therefore a worker whose salary above 21000 is not eligible for bonus therefore he is not considered as an employee in general irrespective of the amount of the salary every person who works for salary is an employee thus you can find here the statute itself prescribes defines who is an employee like that here the words are interpreted according to the meanings that are explained in the statute itself it is called authentic very clear 100% accurate coming to the second b part is that here usual interpretation generally the words in a statute may be interpreted interpretation as per customs interpretation as per usages interpretation as per precedents that means you are going just a little bit outside the statute but the words in the statute are based on customs therefore based on usages 
or the words already explained precedent in the sense here the old judgments for example old judgments that means words in a statute are already explained by the judges in the previous judgments in the previous cases like that if any court defined a term in any stat in any case or judgments and it is repeatedly followed it becomes a precedent therefore it becomes a stare diseases hence same meaning has to be taken for the subsequent interpretations also there is no question of going for the new interpretation like that here the precedents or the words which are related to any custom state traditions they must be understood according to the custom traditions in which these particular words are used hence here usual interpretation judges are now taking help from these customs help from the usages help from the precedents and then decide the word in dispute and explain the meaning of the word in the dispute this is how we call authentic interpretation usual interpretation coming to the second part doctrinal interpretation according to jolovis if the legal interpretation is not possible generally we will be talking about legal interpretation here comes here so litera legis this is known as a litera legis because the words in the statute are interpreted as per the rules prescribed in the statute itself therefore take yas it is this is known as a literologist when the literologist fail then we go to the ratio legis known as a doctrinal interpretation doctrinal interpretation in the sense here doctrine doctrine in the sense here statute why the statute is made what is the purpose of making the statute what this parliament want to achieve by means of this legislation basing on that objectives purpose and intention of the framers we can trace the meaning of the words used in the statute that's how we are called doctrinal interpretation hence it is see here interpretation according to the purpose interpretation of the words in the statute when they are ambiguous meaning can be clarified on the basis of the purpose again this doctrinal interpretation the jolovisky has classified into two a and b in case of a it is known as a grammatical interpretation grammar the language words in the language with grammar will give their own expressions their own meanings will be there hence here every word in a language must be understood in its a grammatical sense that's why i call here grammatical interpretation so as per the rules of ordinary grammar and speech for example if we talk about article 21 of the indian constitution if you take here no person shall be deprived of his life no person shall be deprived of his life now article 21 of the indian constitution is not defining who is a person person means generally we will be looking in the legal terms here person may be a natural person or an artificial person but no person shall be deprived of his life life in the sense here who will have a life generally this is the natural being hence article 21 is talking about the liberty and the life of human beings only natural persons only but not artificial persons and companies and corporations therefore a company cannot claim personal liberty company cannot claim right to life under article 21 though a company is known as a legal person this how we have to find here the ordinary rules of the grammar person generally means human being only and another one person the another grammatical meaning of a person is that person means is it male or female person is a common gender no so male female gender male gender common gender therefore person is a word of a common gender therefore person includes male or female person includes child or old person includes 
a citizen of India or a foreigner. Hence, all are human beings. What? Extending, that is, person means, no person shall be deprived of his life in the sense here, no woman, no man, no child, no old persons, and similarly, no Indian, no foreigner can be deprived of his life accord, except procedure established by law. This way you can find here, the words in the statute, if not defined, therefore not defined, that can be understood as for the grammatical interpretation. That's how your grammatical interpretation means here. And second one, logic. Logical interpretation. Logic in the sense here, we can call here the reason. Purpose for which that particular statute is made. That's why it is given here. So, a word in a statute can be interpreted or meaning of a word can be gathered according to the context in which that particular word was used. And the intention of the framers in using that particular term or word or the purpose of the statute in why it is made like this here by considering the context, intention of the framers and purpose of the statute we can decide the meaning of the words. Therefore, judges are advised in case of ambiguity, find the meaning of a word in a statute according to the context in which it was used, according to the intention of the framers and which case they wanted to use this and also purpose of the statute will make it clear in what sense it was used. Hence here, the doctrinal approach. The same point here, if you talk about Article 21, no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except to proceed is established by law. Now, in the previous class also, I explained what is the word law in Article 21 means. The law does not mean yeah, just a law made by the parliament. Therefore, in this, what context they use the word? Procedure prescribed by law. Law does not mean a law prescribed by the legislative organ, but it is a law of nature. Hence here, this law must contain principles of natural justice. Therefore, the court has, Supreme Court has given wider meaning to Article 21 and explained that here, law means natural law, procedure means any procedure. It is not any procedure. The procedure established here. And also it is not any person, it is only human being and it is not only human being and he may be a citizen or a foreigner, everyone is entitled to get the protection. Like that you can understand here, the judges are given now guidelines while interpreting any statute. While the judges wanted to find any meaning of the words in the statute, they are given two advisors. One go for literal interpretation, another is as for doctrinal interpretation. In case of literal interpretation, again they are asked to watch authentic interpretation, usable interpretation. In doctrinal interpretation, again they are asked to go for grammatical interpretation, logical interpretation like this. That's why in this case you can find where the literal is failure. From here, if you take here, interpretation according to the purpose. This is known as a, this is known as ratio legis. Ratio legis. Hence, you can find your literal legis fail, ratio legis apply. Or else, for some words, you go for, as for the letter of the statute, because the very statute itself here clearly defines certain terms. That's why we take as it is. Sometimes when there is a confusion with respect to the words used in the statute, then we are taking the reason for making that law. The parliament members or constituent assembly members while drafting article 21, they are not intended to confine this liberty to only Indian citizens only. Therefore, they did not use here no citizen of India. They did not use the word no citizen. They used the word person. Therefore, here no person. Person means like that wider meaning is given. This is called doctrinal interpretation. This is called ratio legis. Then hence you can find where the literal legis is not possible, they can, you can find the meaning of the words here as for ratio legis. This is here how Jolovisky classified the rules of interpretation. Coming to more wider terms of interpretation, more wider. 
So not only Jolovsky, but various juries, by their experience, they have given so many principles of interpretation developed like this. Therefore, you can find here other classification of rules of interpretation of tattoos. Other rules are classified like this. One is known as a primary rules of interpretation. Another is known as a <coughs> secondary rules of interpretation. Where it is not, if not properly appearing, please take that here. Secondary rules of interpretation. This is known as a primary rules of interpretation. That means here, this is the first preference. And this is a second preference. Hence here, secondary rules of interpretation and primary rules of interpretation judges while adopting these rules, they should give priority to this first, then only to the next. Coming to the first one, primary rules of interpretation can find like this. There are seven principles in primary rules of interpretation, one is known as a, the rule of literal interpretation. The second one, the rule of reasonable construction. The third one, the mischief rule of interpretation. And the fourth one, the rule of harmonious construction. Fifth one, the rule of adjustum generis, adjustum generis. The sixth one is called the rule of beneficial construction and the rule of exceptional construction. In fact, to explain all these seven, I have to make a seven separate videos because each rule has its own importance in interpretation of statutes and it require elaborate discussion, explanations. But in this area, I am only confining, giving a brief idea about this year instead of explaining each rule widely. In my future videos, you can find this also at a length. If I tomorrow make a video that the rules of interpretation of, the rule of literal interpretation of statute, if I put a one video, you will get another 45 minutes to one hour video you will get here in future. Like that, each rule has its own importance. Therefore, a student of uh, law and advocates and judges aspirants required more knowledge about that, not 5 minutes, 3 minutes, 10 minutes, explanation is not sufficient. Therefore, I am taking this pain in explaining what is the nature and scope of interpretation of statutes here. Therefore, I am making two videos and two parts here, each at least coming as a 45 minutes, each is here because that is the depth of the subject by just telling okay there is some rule there is some rule that is not sufficient for a student to, to have a more knowledge about the tier i am making a very elaborate uh, videos with all deep explanations therefore please consider this year and follow me in my future lectures also it will be more helpful to you to understand the law in wider sense that's why here, in this particular video, in this particular discussion, I'm only confining to explain the meaning only, not explaining the real scope of literal interpretation, real scope of reasonable construction. But anyway, this is the guidelines to the judges that are given. And coming to the second, known as the secondary rules of interpretation, these secondary rules of interpretation are so, given in the form of legal maxims, in the form of Latin maxims, see that here, in the form of Latin maxims here, certain principles are laid down. Nociter esosis, expressio unius est exclusio alterius, contemporanea expositio est fortissimo in legi. Atres, fourth one, Atres magis valia quiam peret. Fifth one, Optima ligam interpices consutudo. Like that, some uh, difficult uh, uh, maxims are given to explain their importance in interpretation of statutes. 
let's come back once again when this is the more important rules than jolovsky's jolovsky is only concept but this is a real rules in fact in the real rules here again you can find two things statutes are you can find here statutes are two kinds basically for our interpretation of statutes one is known as a so unambiguous on ambiguous statutes another is called ambiguous statutes unambiguous unambiguous means here very very clear statutes very clear as i told you in the previous video what is the duty of a legislative organ in making a legislation the legislative organ must take utmost care in making a legislation and the next one it has to use a simple language to make even a common man to understand the law therefore when the legislative organ has taken applied the skill of drafting and taken utmost care used the simple words in the statute and given to the people it is known as unambiguous in such cases you are required to interpret you are required to understand the words in the statute as per literal legis as per literal legis literal in the sense here as per the as per the letter of letter as per letter in the statute then here there is no need to go beyond the ordinary meaning hence it is given rule of literal interpretation in the sense here take the words in the statute as it is every word in the statute shall have its natural meaning ordinary meaning therefore you can here can find here it will have a natural meaning it will have a natural meaning it will have every word will have its own ordinary meaning every word will have its true meaning dictionary meaning therefore judges are required to take that natural meaning that ordinary meaning that true meaning rather than going beyond that and try to, to discover they need not discover they did not go beyond just to take the words as it is because every word has its own meaning that's how literal legis therefore the rule of interpretation literal interpretation apply when the statute is unambiguous therefore only one is applied to unambiguous but coming to the other other six you know that these will be applied to interpret ambiguous statutes if the words in the statute are confusing and the word in a statute are giving two or more meanings and a meaning gathered is not suitable to the purpose for which the legislation is made in such cases court has to invent a new meaning like that where the court is required to invent a new meaning then they apply these rules therefore these are called the rules applied to interpret ambiguous legislations rather than unambiguous legislation therefore top priority is given to first one literal interpretation which means that take the words in the statute as it is don't go beyond the words in the statute don't go beyond the ordinary meaning natural meaning and the true meaning of the words this also one more word i can use here known as a popular meaning popular meaning popular meaning in the sense here the meaning which people generally take if a word in every language there are certain words which people ordinarily understand ordinarily understand therefore you have to take that meaning only for example in one case it is said that when the state of up exempted payment of sales tax on vegetables i repeat here the state of up exempted payment of tax on vegetables therefore they said vegetables are exempted but they did not define what are vegetables what are vegetables then a trader who is dealing with the beetle leaves telugu lo antuntam kada 
Tamalapakalu. When he was dealing with the beta Lucier, he claims, he claims exemption from payment of sales tax on the ground. Beta leaves are also vegetables. Now the question came. What are vegetables? One meaning. Whether beta leaves are vegetables or not. If you go to a common man, ask him whether what are called vegetables, he never specify beta leaves are vegetables. If you go to the market and you say that I am going to purchase a vegetables here, there you will not have beta leaves as a part of the vegetables. Vegetables are those items which are meant for cooking curries and which can be placed on the dining table. But you don't use this beetle leaf for cooking purpose and beetle leaves curry you cannot put on the dining table for dining purpose. It's not a food. Hence here, vegetable does not include this beetle leaves. Like this here, the popular meaning you have to make. Then comes here, ratio, reasonable construction. That means here, all these are coming here, see that as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here, all these are coming as a ratio legis. Ratio legis. Because the interpretation as for the literal interpretation fail. Ratio literal legis fail. Then are going for ratio legis here. Therefore, the, all these points are applied to decide the meaning of the words in the statute as for the purpose for which they are made. In case of reasonable construction, the meaning is taken like this here. When a word in the statute, see that. When a word in the statute are giving two or more meanings here. In case it is happens here, the words in the statute are, I am removing this here and I am giving you the, for example, if the words in the statute, reasonable construction, if word, gives two meanings. If a word in a statute is capable of giving two meanings here, the question comes here, which meaning has to be taken? Which meaning has to be taken? Because it's confusion. Then now there is a guidelines to the judges. Mr. Judge, you take that meaning which furthers the purpose of the legislation and don't take that meaning which defeats the legislation. Therefore, if the meaning has two, uh, two ways here, which is one protects the statute, one defeats the statute. That word meaning that defeats the statute should not be taken. Because I told you already, the law is not made to put in the dustbin. Judges cannot kill the statute. Their responsibility is that to give effect to the statute. Hence, they have to choose that meaning which is called suitable to enforce the statute. That's called reasonable construction. Construct in the sense here, discover the meaning. When you are discovering the meaning, that should be reasonable discovery. You cannot discover a meaning which is unreasonable again. The judges are also put in condition, you must design, you must discover the meaning of the word in a statute when it is confusing, which is a reasonable meaning, but not unreasonable meaning. For example, if I take here, go to the article 368, article 368 of Indian constitution, which is talking about amendment of the constitution. And article 368 contains Power and procedure to amend the constitution. Parliament is given power to amend the constitution. They are using only word power. Now the question comes here. What is mean by this power? Power? Power means power. But if you look into it, it gives you two meanings. Power means unlimited power. Power means limited power. The question comes now. Is it unlimited power or limited power? What is the edges of the power? Hence, old and days, parliament exercised unlimited making power. So, therefore, they said here, Article 368 conferred on them unlimited power to amend any part of the, of the constitution. Therefore, they amended the constitution as they like. 
but slowly coach realized the desire of the framers and said power does not mean unlimited power power means only limited power therefore parliament cannot amend the constitution to take away the fundamental features of the constitution that's why court has developed basic structure theory and explained that power of the parliament is limited it can amend any part of the constitution without destroying the basic structure this way constructed the meaning of the word power reasonably thus the court protected the constitution from the play of the parliament this is called reasonable construction i repeat once again when there is a words in a statute are capable of giving two or more meanings one meaning is a defeating the statute one meaning is a protecting the statute then you have to take that meaning which protects the another one is known as a mischief rule of interpretation mischief rule generally this law this rule is applied to the penal statutes criminal statutes when the law is made generally purpose of law is that to avoid any mischief to avoid evils to avoid any difficulties that were there in the society therefore in case similarly when a word in a statute is capable of giving a two meanings here which meaning has to be taken that meaning has to be taken which prevents the mischief therefore in the mischief rule there is one more rule is there here that rule is known as one important basic principle is that here in mischief rule i give you that also in the mischief rule you can find like this here one important statement is that here advance advance the remedy advance the remedy and suppress the mischief suppress the mischief that means man oka criminal statute interpret chese tappudu padal ardhamu manake emaina different anipiste meeru alanti ardhanu teesukovalante ye ardham aithe aa chattanni aa chattam yokka uddeshanni nilabadutundo daanni teesuko advance the remedy suppress the mischief that way you have to choose but not otherwise you cannot take that meaning which improves the mischief and thereby reduces the remedy next coming here the rule of harmonious construction the rule is another rule in a statute several provisions of the statute is not a single section statute is not a single chapter statute is not a single uh, subject it may be containing variety of rules principles procedures like that when statute is a bundle of several sections bundle of several provisions sometimes it may happen that a provision in the statute may be in conflict with the other provision in the same statute in such a case as that is coming here in case of harmonious construction what we have to see here when there is a conflict between when there is a conflict between two provisions when there is conflict between two provisions here how to resolve the conflict how to remove the conflict and give effect to the both the provisions two provisions are in such a way conflicting if you give importance to one provision it kills the other provision but the framers never intended to give effect to one provision at the cost of the other provision and thereby kill one provision you effect to one provision like that they never intended to create a conflict between two provisions however because of the draft because of certain other unforeseen consequences the conflict developed 
Now it is the duty of the judge to avoid this conflict and give effect to both the persons. That is called giving effect to the both the persons is called harmony. Make them both equal. This is not to killing one for the sake of other. No priority to one. In exceptional cases, if harmony is not possible, giving effect to the persons is not possible, then in such cases, the judges can go beyond this. When harmony is not possible, the question comes. Sir, if the harmony, balancing both the is not possible, giving life to both is not possible, then what to do? Then there is one clue. Then later shall provide. Which provision in the first section, which provision in the second, therefore, the later provision shall provide. Later provision shall provide over the prayer provision. This also known as a non obstante class. The framers may be providing non obstante class to any provision that non obstante class provision shall provide over the other. For example, if any section starts here, not withstanding anything contained in any provisions of this chapter or in this particular act here, that way, if any section starts like this here, not withstanding anything contained in such a case that provision will be given top importance over the other provisions like that here harmony next coming here adjusting generis this another rule a clue to the judges is that while the premers making a legislation while the premers making legislation it is not possible to them to describe each and every word therefore sometimes they may use one or two specific words, at the end they use the general word. For example, it is given here, that's why adjusting generis. For example, it is given here, this act shall apply A, B, C, etc. For example, it is given. The question comes here, this act shall apply to A, B, C, etc. Then how to understand this etc. word? And this act shall apply to X, Y, Z, or the like. Or the like. The question comes, how to understand the like? Well, and now, each atom, A ki, B ki, C ki apply to the, inka, alante andar ki apply to the, alante andar ante avar vallu. Now, the question comes here, adjusting generis in the sense here are the same kind. The general words, must be interpreted as for the specific words here adjusting generates general words must be interpreted of the same kind of the specific words for example that's why it is given adjusting generates rule apply like this when there is a specific word specific word specific word and then a general word is used here after two or more specific words when general word is used here General word is a confusing, therefore, to avoid this confusion, general word must be understood, adjustum generis, of the same kind. Adjustum generis means of the same kind. The same meaning has to be given. For example, people are permitted to have a position of dogs, horse, cats, etc. For example. People are allowed to have a dogs, horses, cats, etc. Therefore, you can have a, as a private property, you can rear these animals. And one next is a taking a the line. For example, he is a taking a, a line kid. The question comes here whether the etc. word comes the line kid. Can you go to the forest and take a, a small uh, wild animal and rear it? No, because these three are belonging to one class known as domestic animals. Etc. also must belong to the domestic animals but not the lions. Lion is a wild animal. Hence, the word etc. cannot be understood into the lion. The word etc. must be include, including other domestic animals.
other domestic animals which are not referred in this year. Because the domestic animals are wider in class here, they cannot be explained, they cannot be written in one line, therefore the framers are reducing the words like this here, this act shall apply or people are permitted to possess dogs, horses and cats etc. This is how we are adjusting generis. Therefore you can understand one more word, the rule of adjusting generis apply to interpret general words following specific words. Hence here, when specific words are followed by general word, when specific words are followed by general word, the general word shall be interpreted as a stim generis. That's one problem. The another coming has the rule of beneficial construction. One more advice to the judges, why the laws are made? Generally laws are made for two important purposes. See that here? They generally laws are made, for example, civil legislations are made, benefit, and here mischief. See that the two you can find here? Beneficial legislation, that is here civil legislations, or mischief, criminal legislations. The laws are made either to provide benefit to the people, or laws are made to prevent the people from doing wrongs, mischief. In case of beneficial legislation, and here also words are ambiguous words are ambiguous then question comes here how to remove this uh, ambiguity in the words which means that the meaning of a word is such provide benefit to the person takes away benefit from the person when the framers made a beneficial legislation what is their intention their intention is to provide the benefit to avoid the benefit Generally, their intention shall be to provide benefit but not to avoid benefit. Therefore, judges are required to interpret the meaning of the words in such a manner that provide benefit, enlarge the benefit and see the people enjoy the benefit. The judges should not stand between the framers and the people, allow the people to enjoy the benefits. For example, I will give you in this also, I am not taking all the cases, in fact I have to I can discuss all the cases, but not here. But I give you one example. In Maternity Benefit Act, you can find it. In Maternity Benefit Act, a woman worker is permitted in the olden days, not today. A woman worker is permitted to have a leave if she is pregnant and about to give birth to a child. She is given 12 weeks leave with salary. Therefore, leave with a salary. 12 weeks is given. 12 weeks leave with a salary. Today it is 26 place. At present it is 26. But in the olden days it is 12 weeks. 12 weeks in the sense here, 6 weeks before the childbirth and after childbirth, 6 weeks like that, there are 12 weeks leave is provided. That is a benefit to the woman workers. There is respect to the woman in India. But in this case, the employer has granted a 12 weeks leave and while paying the salary, he paid 12 weeks into 6 days for a week. 12 into 6. Therefore, he was paying only 72 days. 72 days salary only is paying. 7 into 6. And while asking, sir, why you are paying 6 days in the sense here? Week in the sense six days only because working days are six only. Sunday no work. Therefore, 12 weeks salary. Week salary means six days salary. Therefore, 12 weeks into six days I am paying. He is right. But when the matter came to the court, court interpreted week means week only. Week in the sense seven days only. Therefore, it is a 12 into seven. Therefore, 84 days benefit must be given. This is how we are the court has interpreted the word week means including Sunday also they are taken. Employer is asking week means only working days only. But court said that week means week, 7 days, therefore 12 into 7, 84 days you have to pay. This is known as a beneficial construction, beneficial interpretation. The another one is known as a rule of exceptional construction, exceptional construction. Which means the words are very plain. 
They are very clear. As for the original meaning, no doubt we can take as it is literal interpretation. But while giving effect to that literal interpretation, he gives something confusion. How to understand this also, we will find now. That means, that means here, for example, these are known as a words. Shall, word, may, word, are, word, and. See, these are the four words we are using. Shall means, generally the word shall implies here, compulsory obligation, bound to do. May means option, is a mandatory. Shall is a mandatory. May is a optional. State shall not deprive any person. Equality before law and equal protection. Like that here, when the statute provides that state shall, means here it is obligatory on the part of the state, give effect to that particular provision. But sometimes it may happen. In some legislation they may use the word may. A person may drive a vehicle. Or a person may have a driving license. May have a driving license. That means it is not compelling every person to have a driving license. You may have a driving license. May not have a driving license. But the next moment it is said that. A person may have a driving license. May have. Okay. The next line they were writing here. If any person drives a vehicle without license, he shall be punished with a fine of 1000 rupees. If he drives a vehicle, he shall be punished. Because of the second line, what happens? First line, a person may have. If you say, may have any provision, then what the punishment added to it? Shall have, I paid. Appears to be may have. But in fact, because of the punishment followed, may now converted into shall. Like that here, literal interpretation says that, take the words as it is. But now, exceptional interpretation says that, against this we are going. That means here, may, may be interpreted as a shall. That's what, may, may be interpreted as shall. Shall may be interpreted as may. Or may be interpreted as and. And may be interpreted as or total reverse. In the text, R is there, but you have to read it as and. In the text, it is and is there in the uh, section, but you have to read it as or. And the framers may use the word shall, but the court may read it as a may. Framers may use the word may, but the court read it as a shall. This is called here reverse. This kind of using a different word in the place of the word actually used, this is known as a exceptional. One more point I want to tell you, why it is called exceptional? Exceptional antnaru, original ka man eman A judge has no right to remove the words from the statute. Judge cannot introduce the words in the statute. Judge duty is to take the words in the statute as it is. Kaan ipudin rules different exceptional. Now the judge can read a different. Shall can be read as a may. May can be read as a shall. Or can be read as and. And can be read as. Now to explain this here, I need a separate discussion on this. At this moment, even if you explain it, you can but with this discussion, you can understand, yes, what is the depth of interpretation of statutes here? Literal interpretation, reasonable interpretation, mischief rule of interpretation, harmonious construction, adjusting generis, beneficial construction, exceptional construction. Like this here, judges are guided while dealing with such ambiguous legislations to give effect to them by discovering the meaning with the help of these rules. Hence here, judges are given power to interpret and also there are limitations on his power. They cannot go beyond these rules. There is another one, see. Secondary rules of interpretation. What are the secondary rules of interpretation here? These are the secondary rules of interpretation given here. 
So what are the see now? The secondary rules of interpretation are explained in the form of Latin maxims. One is called nocisar esosis, which is mean here associated words. Associated words. That means here meaning of a word shall be gathered from its associated words. Simple, I'll give you once again. In case of adjustment generates, what do you understand now? Some specific word is there, specific word is there, specific word is there, then general word is there. Now, yes, the general word is confusing, the general word must be understood, adjusting generates of the same kind. But here, you can find here, nocis or associates. Here, some specific word is there, specific word is there, specific word is there, unspecific word is there. This specific word is confusing now. First three specific words are very clear, no problem. But the fourth specific word is now doubtful and it is giving a different meaning. Then question comes, how to understand that? Therefore it is said, the meaning of a word can be gathered from its associates. From its associates. So, the difference also you can find, adjustment generis and nocis or associates here, difference. In this case, we are interpreting the general word. In this case, we are interpreting a specific word following the other specific words. Therefore, where a word is a specific and it is confusing, its meaning shall be gathered from its associating words. Kabata line lo yeye words nayo words lo meaning but it is kondi. Alagi next word andi. Expressio unius, yes, exclusio alterius. Express mention of one thing implies exclusion of other thing. If the framers are clearly mentioning, if the framers are very clearly mentioning that this statute applies, this statute applies to one. See here, expressly mentioning one, it implies it does not apply to. For example, it is given here the, this. This particular poison shall apply to all women, for example. If it said it applies to all women, then automatically it implies that it shall not apply to man. Therefore, man cannot claim equality before law and equal protection of laws. When the law is made, the law is made to regulating all gold mines, for example. Law is made <coughs> to regulating Next, uh, regulating working of the gold mines here, then it cannot be applied to the coal mines. Because express mention of one thing implies the others are excluded. Expressio unis, yes, exclusio alterius. Expression of mention of one thing excludes all other things. Instead of using word gold mine, coal mine, and other any material mines, then if you are making like this here, the all the mines, then it applies to all. Hence here, you express mention of one thing, you exclude the other thing. Next one, contemporanea expositio, fortissima in legi. Contemporaneous exposition is the best. The rule is that contemporaneous exposition is the best. What does it mean? So, for example, a law is made in 1958. And now we are now 2020. And after 50 years or 60 years later, there is a doubt with respect to a word in the statute. Now the question comes here, how to understand word in the statute in 2020 means here, understand the word in the same sense in which it was understood by the people existing at the time 1950. That's called contemporaneous means. A word in the statute must be understood in the sense it was understood by the people living at the time of its making. That means framers, judges, jurists, lawyers, other philosophers, all public servants, how they received that law, how they received the words in that particular law is important to avoid the confusion today.
Hence, here a word in a statute must be understood in case of ambiguity. In the same sense in which it was understood by the people living at the time of its making. This is called here contemporaneous expositio. The next comes here at res magis valiat kiam parat. Which means here the same. This is what a reasonable construction must be given. This is. Therefore, for the reasonable construction, this maxim also you can use. At res magis valiat kiam parat. Give a sensible meaning to the words in the statute. Simple word is that. Give a sensible meaning, a reasonable meaning to a words in the statute to give effect to the statute. In case of ambiguity, the sensible meaning, non-sensible meaning is not nonsense meaning. It's a sensible meaning, suitable meaning which furthers the objectives of the legislation rather than kills the legislation. That's why put the address magis gradium parents, which means same article 368 Indian constitution, if you take here, you can understand. If you consider power means power, there is no limitations on that because the premiers never used the word parliament shall have a limited power like that. They did not use here. Power means power, but court interpreted sensibly to protect the constitution from the mischief done by the parliament and said that power does not mean unlimited power therefore the word amend is different because here power what is the power given power is given to amend but not to destroy amendment is different destroying is different therefore power is not given to the parliament to repeal the constitution in the name of amendment Hence, a sensible meaning was gathered to the word power and said that it is a limited power. And the last one we are optima ligam interpreces. That is your custom. Custom provides. Optima ligam interpreces constitutio. Which means your custom provides over the words in the statute. Because in general, framers never intended to go against the society. Framers never intended to make any law which infringes customary and traditionally practices of the people. Therefore, in case of any violation, conflict between the pros in the statute and the customs of the people here, the customs of the people shall provide. But there may be an exception. The exception is that here in the olden days, people have a custom of child marriages. Now the law is made to abolish the child marriages. Now we cannot claim child marriage is a custom, hence it shall provide. Like that we cannot claim. But in other cases only telling here, the words used in the statute and the customs prevailing in the society are conflicting here, the custom shall provide. Therefore, judges must give due regard to the customs because the framers never intended to violate the customs, infringe the customs and make a law against the wishes of the people. This how we are, these provisions are providing guidelines to the judges. And these are also known as a limitations on the power of the judges also. Hence, they are given power to interpret. They have a duty to interpret and also there are limitations as in the previous classes I told you like this you can find now the power, they have a power to interpret, they have a duty to interpret and also there are limits on interpretation of statutes. The same subject gives power to the court to interpret. And also it is a duty of them. They cannot say no to the interpretation. Whatever difficulty it may be. They are bound to give interpretation. And also while interpreting. They cannot interpret the words in the statute. As they desire. They are required to interpret. According to the procedure. Therefore in some cases they have to take. 
the rule of literal interpretation. In some cases, they have to take the rule of reasonable construction. In some cases, they have to take here mischief rule of interpretation. In some other cases, they have to take here the rule of harmless construction, adjusting generis, beneficial construction, and exceptional construction. Like that here, they are not allowed to interpret as they like. Their hands are also tight because judiciary and the legislative organ is two different organs where the legislative organ make the law, judiciary cannot override the law, refuse the law. Hence, they are only allowed to give way to the law and give effect to the law. Hence, if there is any small defects are there in the law, you have to correct that defects only and rectify the defects only and give effect to the legislation. Thus, here, for the smooth application of the legislations and also for smooth running of administration, and for smooth going of the society, judges are allowed to remove the defects in the statute, rectify the defects in the statute, and thereby give proper enforcement to the legislation. This is the ultimate purpose of interpretation of statutes. Hence here, it is the due power of the judges to interpret the statute. It is the duty of the judges to interpret the statute. And there are also some limitations. This is what the <coughs> interpretation of tattoos, nature and scope we understand. Ika Rabuya classes lo manamu, we till ni, very very wakoka interpretation rule manatis kunte, wakoka ti, wakoka yase outundi, kanka in the coming days I may be providing videos on these matters also tomorrow. Rule of literary tradition. It takes a lot of time with the case material I'll give you with the die comes here. So, like this year, I stop with this year the rule of interpretation of statutes, how they are developed and applied. Thank you very much.